Hello everyone and welcome back to A Swift Look. I'm Zoe and today we're going to be talking about Taylor and Travis leaving each other for over a month. We have some new insight into how they're feeling about their separation and time apart and also how they felt about their time together over the summer. We're of course, we're of course going to break down Taylor's shows in Hamburg, her surprise song she chose to sing, and also one of Taylor Swift's best friends is married. So we're going to get into all of that. But before we do, I do just want to say, I know I've mentioned it on here before, but we have another YouTube channel called A Fast Break that covers sports, all things sports. So if you are a sports fan, and especially if you are an Olympics fan, the Olympics is coming up starting, it's already started, but the opening ceremonies are tomorrow. And if you are a fan of the Olympics, if you want Olympics coverage, please make sure to check out our channel. I will link it down below. We're going to have basically everything, all Olympics for the next two weeks. So much coverage, so much discussion. We have a fast break podcast that you can watch as well. So if you are a sports fan, it would mean so much to us if you gave it a, a, a subscribe, if you watch, if you checked it out, it mean everything to us. Okay. Let's get into the show, starting off, as I mentioned, with um, some sources coming out talking about Taylor and Travis's time apart and also their time together over the summer. So People Magazine um, had a source that said that Travis's last few concerts were bittersweet. They knew their time together like this was coming to an end and he made sure to spend every minute he could with Taylor, which is true because we literally saw Travis at the Eras tour until the last possible second he could be there. Like I'm almost, I kind of feel like he flew directly from the Eras tour straight to training camp. Like I don't even know if he went home first. I think he was like first fly out of there, then got back just in time for training camp. Which, again, like, this is a long time. This is probably the longest amount of time they will have spent apart since they started dating, I'm guessing. Because, like we said, training camp goes until middle of August. Taylor's performing in Europe to, like, mid to late August. I don't remember exactly the date where when her London shows end, but it's definitely towards the back end of August. We don't know if Travis would be able to go back back to London after training camp. I think they have like a little bit of time off in between training camp and then when the season starts, but I'm not sure it's long enough to go back to Europe. Maybe it is. I mean, we've seen Travis, we've seen Travis fly for like a day and he'll go far distances to see Taylor. So it's possible, but even still, that's like almost a month apart, which is a long time. Now, the good thing I think is that they're both working. They're both in their zone. They both like, Even if Taylor wasn't touring, she wouldn't really be able to see Travis right now anyway, because again, he is shipped off to training camp uh, where he's fully focused on the football season and whatnot. Um, But they definitely made their time together count. So this is what the source continued to say. It's definitely tough to be apart, but they do everything they can to make it work and show up for each other. They're so in love and very, very happy together. All their friends and family can see it. And so can we, frankly. I think everyone can see it, how happy they are. And I know I've mentioned this a thousand times on this show, but I cannot wait for football season. One, because I'm a Chiefs fan and I just love watching football, but also the Taylor content and her being at games and talking about that and breaking that down. And it's just, I feel like last year was, it caught us all by such surprise. Her showing up to that very first game was so shocking. And now we're used to it in a sense that we've done it for a full football season. And now we can just like enjoy it and have fun and look forward to it. And I, for one, cannot wait for that first game at Arrowhead Stadium. It's going to be fantastic. So here's hoping, I mean, I'm sure Taylor and Travis are FaceTiming a lot. They're still staying connected, engaged, and um, yeah, can't wait till they're reunited once again. But let's let's go over her um, her Hamburg shows, her surprise song. So she did two nights in, in Hamburg. She's been in Germany now for a couple of weeks. I think she goes to Munich next. So she's still in the country of Germany. Um, and she did two nights, as I mentioned. So the first night, her surprise song, she did a mashup of Teardrops on My Guitar 
and The Last Time. Now, you guys know I'm always honest about the songs I like, the songs I don't like. Love Teardrops on My Guitar. One of my favorite Taylor Swift songs. Again, a song I wish she gave debut more love in the actual set. Well, she just doesn't give it any love. She doesn't sing one song from debut, which is sort of surprising to me because I think that album is really, really good. And so I would have loved that song to be in the actual main set list, but I'm not the biggest fan of The Last Time. I'm not, and I love, Red is my favorite album, but that song for me just doesn't quite work. So I like half love this surprise song, half don't really. Then she did a, a um, mashup of We Were Happy and Happiness. I get the synergy, happy, happiness. Two songs, I don't, they're fine. They're fine, but I don't love them. So I, I, I have to admit if I was there for this show, I would be like, okay, at least I got to hear Teardrops on, on, on my guitar, but the other songs don't really do it for me. Maybe that's controversial. Second night, she did a mashup of The Last Great American Dynasty, which she had cut. She had it in the set list and then she cut it to make room for the new um, TTPD songs. And then she did that with a mashup of Run, which was a surprise or a uh, vault track off of Red. It's fine. It's fine. I don't love it, but it's fine. And then she did a mashup of Nothing New and Dear Reader. Love Nothing New, another vault track off of Red. Dear Reader, I'm lukewarm on. So for me, these surprise songs are okay. Again, I don't love them. I don't hate them. They're not my favorite. I think she's done better. But again, as always, let me know in the comments which night you would have preferred to have been to. I probably would have said night one just like just for Teardrops on my guitar, I think. But I don't know. Again, like we're judging things so harshly because we love everything that she does. It's all so good. Um, and then the last piece of news, I teased it at the front, Taylor Swift's, one of Taylor Swift's best friends is pregnant. And it's her best friend, Abigail. You know Abigail, obviously. I mean, if you're a Taylor Swift fan, I feel like everyone knows who Abigail is. But um, Abigail is Taylor Swift's best friend from high school. She's the one that is mentioned in the song 15. You sit in class next to a redhead named Abigail and soon enough, you're best friends. Um, that's a line from 15. Um, she's pregnant. She is having a baby. And actually, she, her... Um, her Instagram caption when she revealed her pregnancy is I'm having his baby, which is clearly a nod, you know, to Taylor's song, um, Taylor's song, uh, but daddy, I love him. Um, and just congratulations to Abigail. I think it's really cool how obviously Taylor has so many friends and she has superstar A-list friends and, you know, actor friends and singer friends and just people who are like, just as famous or close to as famous as she is. But I really love how Taylor has maintained this friendship with Abigail since they were teenagers, like since they were young kids. They've they stayed close, they've stayed friends through all the ups and downs of life. And I think it's really cool. I think it's really awesome. And I'm just happy for Abigail, um, happy for her. And can you imagine having like Taylor Swift as your aunt? Because I, mean, I would have to imagine at this point, Taylor and Abigail are so close that she probably does feel like a sister. Um, that would be crazy. <laughs> that would be crazy. I mean, Abigail's pregnant. We've got Brittany Mahomes pregnant, expecting a baby girl. Like Taylor's got a lot of babies in her life. Um, she's playing auntie to lots of different babies, which is just amazing and so cool. So that is that for today's show. Next week, again, we'll cover the Munich shows, anything else that pops up in Taylor's life over the hand, you know, next handful of days. As always, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do so. Follow us on social media and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.